Leadership has been around for as long as people have gathered together in communities. We also see it out in the natural world. We see it in bands of gorillas, where there's a clear hierarchy, the silverback ruling over the rest. We also see it in the clear matriarchy that we see, within herds of elephants. But I want to ask ourselves, what is leadership? Now for me, I always come to this one definition by Alberto Silva in a paper he published in 2016, where it says that leadership is the process of interactive influence that occurs in a context when a group of people accept someone else as their leader towards some common goals. Now, often people ask the question, what is the biggest challenge in leadership? To me, that is completely the wrong question. Instead, what we should be asking is what is the biggest challenge to leadership? Now, if I return to this definition, there is one killer bit that sort of speaks to me. And it is this, that some people accept. In order to be a leader, you must have followers. You are not a leader if people haven't chosen to follow you. And therefore, the biggest challenge to leadership might come when people choose not to accept you. And that might be because you no longer represent the community in which you are serving. Now, in terms of representing, that can be representing the needs of the community, the values, the opinions, or the goals. Now, when this happens, when you no longer represent the community, it can lead to these things. It can lead to polarization of opinions, where people believe two completely opposing views. Siloing, where people section off into little groups. It can lead to alienation of particular subgroups within that community. And it can lead to segregation. All of these four things we see in all of the communities that we're involved with right now. So, for me, I then look at this. Leadership diversity. So what is leadership diversity? Well, first off, we need to start with a definition for diversity. Diversity, when you Google it, this is the first one that comes up, is the practice or quality of including or involving people from a range of different social, ethnic, different genders, different sexual orientations, amongst others. Now, for me, when we're looking at leadership and leadership diversity, I get this picture of a clear hierarchy, and I put it as a mountain here. And there, standing on the top, is a leader. And yes, that leader is a middle-aged white man, just like me. And what they're often doing is they're looking out, and they're going, oh, where's diversity? Where's diversity? The problem is, where they're looking is at the top of that hierarchy. And there isn't much diversity there. Most of the people look the same. Where is the diversity? Most of the diversity is down there. That is where all the differences and the differences of opinions are found. And that's where all the fun happens. So what the leaders really need to do is they need to change the paradigm and they need to be in and amongst their team. When you're in and amongst your team, you can't help but see the richness of diversity that occurs there. So I want to return back to our diversity definition we found from Google. And look at this word different. What differences are there? where there are many different types of differences that we can have, whether it's racial and ethnic, whether it's religious beliefs, whether there's disabilities or neurodiverse differences, all of these need to be embraced and celebrated. So how can we do this? We can do this by practicing inclusion. Now for me, this is just simple, good leadership. And it starts with what we call the little things. Now the first little thing that needs to happen is we need to learn the names of those that we have within our teams or organization. Whether it is walking down a corridor and knowing the name of someone walking down and saying hello in the morning to them, rather than just ignoring or walking past going, hey. The second thing is be curious. Be curious about what's happening in their lives, what events may be coming up, what things they may have done at the weekend and asking them about this. Remembering that they're going to do something that weekend and asking about it on Monday. Celebrate the differences that they bring to our team and our community. And cultivate empathy and understanding for what may be going on in their wider lives. When we do all of this, what happens is that we then can be an example to others. When we're an example to others, leaders can then represent the community that they're in, which is the problem that I identified earlier. This will do two things. The first one, it will improve problem solving and generate innovative solutions and you can navigate uncertainty becoming more resilient to future challenges that may be coming along so 
leadership diversity. I had a look for a couple of studies, and one of the main studies I found was a McKinsey and Company study. They did three parts to this. The most recent one was produced in 2020. They started in 2014, and they were looking at organizations and with two clear metrics, which they were looking for in terms of their diversity. The first one was gender diversity. So gender diversity. When they did this study, they were comparing organizations that had the highest rate of gender diversity compared to those with the lowest rates. And what they found was on this graph here, from 2014 all the way through to 2019, those which had the highest gender diverse leadership teams, not just teams, leadership teams, outperformed everybody else by up to 25%. When we go to ethnic diversity, the second measure that they looked at, the teams which had the most ethnic diverse leadership team, they were between 30 and 35% more productive and more profitable than those that weren't. Now there's a third measure that I want to actually point out and that is neurodiversity. This one has not been seen. Whether that's because a lot of people are masking or whether people aren't being diagnosed, this has not been studied well enough. This is something that we must start looking into. Now, because there's no study out there, in my research, I found this quote. It's a very long quote, and I'm not going to make you read it. What I'll do is I'll summarize what it says. If you were to have 10 of the smartest people in the room together, and they had a 10% chance of getting something wrong. If they all had the same mindset, the same view, the same background, the same way of thinking, then it's likely that they will all be wrong at the same time. And what can happen is that can cause an existential risk to the organization. Now, what Manning in this 2018 paper did was come up with this idea of a neurodiversification portfolio. Amongst a leadership team, if we have a neurodiverse team with people with different viewpoints, you will therefore not fall into the risk of everyone making the same wrong decision and therefore putting your organization at risk of collapse. So leadership diversity, to summarize, for me, this is about practicing empathy regularly, about representing the community that we are in charge of and appreciating individuals and what they can bring to a leadership team making sure that the team sees, feels, and hears what reflects them in their leadership team, where differences are celebrated and harnessed as strengths. And last but not least, embracing completely new ideas and empowering individuals within the community to achieve greatness, to ultimately reach leadership themselves. Thank you very much.